prison game that's what is going on my name is tenef127 and welcome back to another skyforge playstation 4 video and in today's video we're going to be talking about the basic starter guide for paladin now this is going to be a basic guide to paladin and of course tanking but keep in mind this is going to cover both knight and paladin it's just going to be you know a few simple tips tricks and things you know things that i learned things that have worked out for me now keep in mind guys this isn't you know some set in stone guide um, i know that this may be, not be the 100 percent proper way to play this class but this is just personally what i do what i've done to have success and keep in mind also that this is just a beginner tutorial i'll be teaching more advanced tips and tricks and everything later on and stuff like that but for this guy we're just going to keep it really basic you know for people you know who want to get into tanking but you know they're questioning it they're questioning it you know they're worried that it may be difficult or something like that well i'm here to tell you guys that it's really not and tanking in this game is actually so far pretty pretty easy i mean i'm not saying you know that you're going to be a hardcore rating tank you know in a day or anything like that it's going to take practice you know there's going to be a, a lot of decent stuff you gotta learn but it's really not that bad so we're going to start with the basics we're just going to talk about you know the combo attacks the cool thing is like i've said in my reviews and you know and stuff like that for this game the game is really based on you know tap tap combo attack combo attacks you know kind of working like you know fighting games or you know like button smash jrpgs and you know and stuff like that you see how you have square square for punishing blow square triangle for seal of light square 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 for judicial blow square square triangle for, pun for punishing bolt square 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 for divine scourge now i want to tell you guys something about punishing bolt and divine scourge these two do aoe damage when they um when you slam them when you slam them down so you want to keep those in your rotation often especially if you're pulling multiple enemies because you know that way you'll attack all enemies and you'll be instantly holding holding hate now the thing with holding hate th with this class is it's not too difficult because after you bump up the um the temple sum and uh, level it up a bit you get an ability that automatically increases your aggro generation every time you attack so as long as you're staying up on your enemies you're good but I'm going to show you guys, you know, my um, my starter rotation, my opener and stuff like that. And then, you know, you guys can you know season it to, you know, how you like it or stuff like that. But this is just personally what I do. So me personally, I run in, I run in straight up with, with on, with onslaught. I start off with on, onslaught and then I use waves of wrath. The reason for that is because onslaught is your basic pulling move. For those who don't think, who don't think so, because, you know, I started off not thinking this too. I didn't think Paladin had a um had a pulling move every time i ran a dungeon as a tank i would always um run in there the dps would be flying ahead of me they would attack the enemies first and it would just be a complete mess so i mean it's it's not too bad you know if you know you got a decent group or whatever it's not really you know too heavy on that in, in five man dungeons unless you're doing hard mode ones you want to be a bit more proper but you guys get you guys get what i'm saying so here's here's what you um so here's your your pulling move onslaught and what it does is the paladin actually sprints and charges ahead of the whole party and inflicts damage to the um to the enemy that you're that you're targeting so i'm going to show you guys you know a bit of my opening my opening rotation right here as you guys can see there is a group of enemies in front of me i'll hit r2 and i'll charge up to them take a swing and then i'll immediately hold l2 and triangle and cast this little aoe move the aoe move right here the reason i do that is because that way when i'm surrounded by enemies i'm guaranteed you know to have the aggro of every single enemy enemy around me and i wonder if that move actually waves of wrath if it does um use a sword attack to 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 attack to a nearby enemies inflicting force on them, knocking them down the weaker the enemy the longer it stays down this ability does not require a target consumes righteous anger okay now waves of wrath i'm going to tell you guys a little something a little something about it it doesn't tell you on there but remember paladin has an ability where every attack it, it generates more aggro so waves of wrath every single wave that goes by you're generating more aggro that's why i, re I um i honestly recommend it as an as an opener so charge in with with r2 slam down waves of wrath which is you know because these are little dummy enemies i'm probably going to kill them all and then what i do what i do from there is you want to buff yourself up l2 and square and i'll show you guys what that move is what that move is right now I'm going to go through the moves one at a time, so forgive me if my um, if my thing here is a little annoying. Creates holy ground around the paladin for 15 seconds. In this area, the paladin's combo attacks do not consume righteous anger, and the paladin inflicts 30% more damage. 
Now, the reason you want to do that is because you're doing more DPS. You're consuming more damage. So the honest and right way for this to be done, and um, I've honestly just learned this in this video. See, making this video for you guys is actually pretty cool. And now I'm learning new stuff I need to be doing myself. So here's how I'm going to change my rotation up now. I'm actually going to activate, activate the buff first, then charge in with R2, and then do the wave, do the wave attacks. Now from there, keep in mind, um, the buff will still be on, but I'll be doing 30% more damage with my wave attacks. And then from there, you just want to start slicing in with your combos. Just, you know, whichever combos you, you see fit. To keep in mind, guys, the one thing the one thing I do want to recommend is, like I said before, you want to make sure that you keep um, Punishing Bolt and Divine Scourge in your combo rotation fairly often. So square, 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 triangle. And you guys see how it hit all the enemies right there? That's why. Because you're going to be always, you know, hitting multiple enemies. If you're surrounded by a mob of enemies, you know, then that's definitely something you need to do. But if there's only one enemy, it's really not too big of a deal. But I keep that in my ro that specific one in my rotation often. So that way, you know, I'm always doing AOE damage. I'm hitting multiple targets. And that guarantees that, you know, they're staying on me and not going, in, going into the party. So now that we know, you know, a little basic opener for offense, how do you guys want to deal with defense? Well, the Paladin has two specific um defensive defensive cooldowns you have you have Aegis of Light creates a barrier around the Paladin and their ally the barrier absorbs damage gives immunity for removal objects control effects for four seconds what what it basically does is you're immune to damage and control effects for four seconds you and an ally of your choice so here's here's what I do honestly most of the time when I go into a um when I go into a new into a new into a new a new um a new battle instead of putting that on first I'll put on I'll put on celestial shield now depending on the situation if it's like a heavy raid boss maybe use an Aegis of light first you know we're going to say that go with Aegis of light first my apologies I'm going to you're going to start off going into the fight you want to cast Aegis of light now, it has a cooldown of 16 seconds, and you see that it will be on you, and now it's gone. Well, as soon as Aegis of Light disappears, go ahead and hit Circle and cast the Barrier. Now, the Barrier is going to last until either that bar in the bottom right corner runs out, or until the, the, the shield is completely depleted. If you rotate, and as you guys can see, it just ran out, and bow, Aegis of Light is already back ready to be used. If you guys keep a healthy balance between these two moves, and look at that, Aegis of Light's gone, Barrier's ready to go again. There's, there's you know, prime example. But like I was saying, if you guys keep a decent balance between these two moves and you're always keeping an eye on your cooldowns, I'm not going to say you can be invisible, but you can keep yourself pretty immune from, pretty immune from taking damage. Like, you'll rarely and never take much damage, especially that, and that's not even counting the, um, the buffs you'll get from, you know, like an alchemist on light binder, whether you know you're running dungeons, raids, and stuff like that, etc. You can keep yourself pretty immune to damage as long as you stay up on these two on these two cooldowns throughout your rotation. So like, you know, let's say, you know, let's say, you know, you want to know the best strategy to do that. Well, let's go ahead and do a and do a full on a, do a full on rotation. We're gonna buff up, charge in. Do the waves. We'll go ahead and cast our cast our shield up. Right before we go into our first combo. Do a combo. Do another combo. Do one more combo. Let's say every combo takes three to five seconds, you know, because you got a 16 second cooldown. So by the time you do three combos, bow, you have another you have another um another cooldown ready. You see how easy that is? And then by the time we do three more combos, oh my bad, I'm sorry. Look, the barrier is already ready again. You have constant defense going between your offense. And just do these between between your um your combo attack rotations. Do a combo. Put up a shield. Or do another combo. Put up another shield. And you know, just keep just keep going from there. Or you know, do do a shield, you know, or a defensive cooldown between two combos or between three combos. You know, whatever's most comfortable for you. 
but that's my that's my honest suggestion and how I and how I look at it. But anyway, guys, if this guide helped you, be sure to smash that thumbs up button for me. And remember, if y'all have any questions or comments, or, you know, even additional tips you guys would like to offer me, I'm open to criticism, open to tips. Be sure to leave them in the comment section below. But I want to thank you guys all so much for watching. It's your boy Tenek One Two Seven, and please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Till next time, peace out, take care. Oh.